Hey, Mr. Pulumbo. Uh, I decided to do Japanese for this project. And uh, my quote goes like this. Michi ni mayo kyoto kyoso. Michi oshiru kyoto da. Uh, this means getting lost is how you learn the way. Uh, one thing I found out when uh, Japanese people greet each other is that they bow. And there are two types of bow that they use. Uh, one is uh, the simple nod of the head is more of like a informal or casual way of showing respect while the full bow at the waist is more of a tremendous sign of respect. And um, also I noticed um, that there are three different parts in the Japanese writing system. Um, and the three main sections to their alphabet um, are hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Um, these three make up their whole alphabet and are separated off into sections. The first two are pretty easy to learn, I've heard. Uh, I have yet to try it, though. I've learned, to, I've learned how to write it, but not pronunciate it. But lastly, in addition to that, suffixes in the English language are basic when compared to Japanese writing language. Um, they have suffixes that are more meaningful and respectful when talking about someone or to someone. Um, these suffixes um, contain like uh, kati, which is like for someone uh, younger, um, and sama, which is like a great, uh, which is like a great respectful sign when you're talking to someone who is important, like a, a royal or emperor or something. And uh, this relates back to the Saphir uh, Wolf hypothesis because um, when people when when their their suffixes are a reflection of the Japanese culture and how the people are raised in a way um, throughout their life to treat their elders with more respect and their whole culture is very peaceful and they have tranquility. Yeah, that concludes it.